Hey everyone, Guy from Midwinter Minis here, and I had a totally different video planned for you this week, but sometimes videos take way longer to make than you thought, and even though I reckoned it would be very cool to make a video showcasing Hattie's awesome holiday-themed models, her work in progress stuff, her pile of shame, and her paint collection, it turns out that wasn't quite as small a job as I thought it would be. So let's do a good old-fashioned speed painting video to tide us over. I was gifted a single marine from the new Horus Heresy box set, and I asked my Patreon supporters what chapter we should go for, and the team chose Emperor's Children. The Emperor of Mankind's very own special boys, which made their betrayal and allegiance to Horus even sweeter. Uh, I mean, sad and disappointing. Poor, poor Emperor. Anyway, their pre-Heresy colour scheme is, to be frank, all over the shop. In some pictures they're hot pink, in some they're a deep, almost bluey purple, in some they're quite red. In others, not so much. The actual Emperor's Children paint even has a weird yellow undertone to it. Sort of annoying if you're looking to match an official colour scheme, but pretty freeing if you just want to make your own chapter look awesome to you. And after all, that's what's most important. So let's take a look at this new marine. There's a couple of fun things I noticed. The power packs are way bigger than the original Space Marine packs from the 80s and 90s, but pretty much the exact same size as the power packs from the Assault on Black Reach Marines and onwards, and that includes the Primaris power packs too. Lots of other people seem to be annoyed that the bumpy pauldrons are split into two parts, but I think that's so all of the knobbly studs are nicely rendered. When this style of pauldron used to be cast in one piece, the ones that were at the sides had weird flat edges which always looked a little bit shonky. You can smooth out the seam on the shoulder pad pretty well by just brushing over it with Tamiya Thin Cement. I'll leave a link in the video description if you fancy getting some of this for yourself. Hi, Hattie here. Sorry to interrupt, but I bloody love that glue. I've only just started using it because it's what Guy has in the studio, but it's the best plastic glue I've used so far. I love it. By the way, if you see something moving in the background of this video, that's just Hattie building literally all of my Necrons for a future painting challenge, and she's having a great time building 80 warriors, as you can clearly see. Mmm, so much fun. Also, the new Heresy heads are quite a bit smaller than their old beaky counterparts from the Tactical Squad kit. Check it out. I also found these little connection point things on the shoulders really got in the way for making the pauldrons sit nicely in place, so I filed them down so the pads could sit a bit closer. As the Horus Heresy game is basically about space marines wailing on other space marines, chances are you're going to be painting a lot of these models to get your force numbers up. So I'm going to focus on quick, cheaty painting techniques to get your models ready quickly but still looking great, and only using paintbrushes, no airbrushing. You might find it easier to paint the models quickly if you paint the infantry and their bases separately, and that way you don't have to worry about making a mess, putting texture around their boots, or making mistakes while painting. You can obviously do whatever method you prefer, it won't make a huge difference to be honest. For the body, I primed it black using Halford's Matte Black Spray, and have you ever seen a smoother finish? Gorgeous! And for the base, I went for grey instead, as I want it to have a lighter tone overall to contrast the model on it. First up, base coating the armour with Vallejo's Royal Purple. As I said, use whatever purple you fancy, and I fancy this one. It covers really, really well. I probably could have left it at one thin coat to be honest, but I went for two just to make sure it was a nice solid colour to work up from. I then mixed that Royal Purple with Vallejo's Squid Pink in equal parts, and then used a big old soft brush to dry brush the whole model. If you want the armour to be lighter, give it a really good going over here. But I fancy this Emperor's Children... Emperor's Child? Space Marine to have pretty dark, rich armour, so I went quite light on the dry brush, just catching raised areas and avoiding the recesses, focusing more on the top of the model than the bottom. Now I'll do the same thing again, but with an even lighter tone. Two parts squid pink to one part royal purple this time, and gave it a slightly more sparing dry brush, mostly on the sharp edges. These new marines have really easily accessible under armour for getting your brush into, so they shouldn't be too annoying to paint a different colour. For this scheme I chose a neutral grey. They do your best to avoid the armour, but we can fix any mistakes we make later. I also used this grey to paint the pipes on the power pack, as well as a couple of cables running between the marines armour panels. For the accent colour on the armour, Emperor's Children use gold. I love the tone of Vallejo's old gold, and I reckon it'll work really well set against that royal purple, but I know it's going to need two coats though, because it goes on a bit transparent. If you want to cut down the steps, you could use something very opaque, like Retributor armour, but that's a little bit too yellowy for what I want. 
I don't know if you've noticed, but these new marines don't really have any trim on their armour to speak of, so you're kind of limited to accenting things like the studs on the pauldrons, the power pack vents, the grills across the top of the pack, which are pretty easy to pick out just using the side of your brush, and maybe the harness details on the chest. I also chose to paint this little panel on the bottom of the right pauldron too. As I said, I went back for coat number two just to make sure it was nice and solid. Keeping things simple, next up I used black paint to paint the bolter, and also carefully dropped a bit of thinned black paint into the recesses of the eyes. So to contrast the purple of the model, I'm going to choose a tan colour for the base, so a good old dusty, rocky theme. To start off, I base coated it with Vallejo Khaki. While I waited for that to dry, I grabbed a silver paint, plate mail from the army painter just to shake things up a bit, and lightly dry brushed the bolter using a small brush for better control. Now to add some quick and cheaty shading to the recesses, I mixed Army Painter Strong Tone, which is a warm toned but very dark wash, about 50-50 with water to make it less stainy and a bit more subtle, and then sloshed it all over the base, and the model itself. You can use a brown wash and black wash combined to get a similar colour usually, and you can pull it away if it starts to form in puddles, but if you're painting a ton of these models at once, it's thin enough that you don't have to worry too much to be honest. I let that whole mess dry for a while and then came in with a quick dry brush of everyone's favourite warm off-white. Can you guess what it is? Pale sand. Oh, got it in one. Well done, Dana. A cheeky little black rim on the base. Stick the model on using super glue and after, what, about 30 minutes of hands-on painting time using very simple forgiving techniques, this Emperor's Child, yeah, I've said it, I'm sticking with it, is ready for the tabletop. And it'll look great accompanied by another 19 or... 119 of its battle brothers. In a second I'll show you some slightly more advanced techniques you can use to give these sons of Fulgrim a little more pizzazz and oomph, but first let me thank our most recent Patreon supporters. BC, Brandon Mackay, Bastian Hoff, Scrymere92, Kate Holden, Ian Mackey, Nick Chacken, A. McSee, David Curry, Michael Sullivan, Dave Weldon, Fat John, Midlife Crisis, Tom, Ward.co, Zachary Whittle, Alzathoth, Cedric Kremers, Logan Nyros, Johnny Anderson, 8-Bit Squirtle, AG Bell 8, and Mr. Willy Banger. Total heroes, one and all. Right then, let's crack on with the slightly more advanced stuff if you want to spend a bit more time on your marines. Let's talk transfers. So the 2018 Chaos Transfer set may have done Emperor's Children dirty with absolutely no designs at all, but the good old 2013 sheet has you covered. The good news is literally everyone who's ever even looked at a Chaos Space Marine has one of these sheets, so you won't struggle to find some. Wet the design, and while you're waiting for it to soak up some moisture and release from the sheet, paint some acrylic medium or matte varnish or satin varnish onto the face of the pauldron, and when the transfer releases from the paper, scoop it up with a brush, dab off the excess moisture onto a paper towel and carefully lay it in place. You can give it a gentle dab and a soft press with some paper just to make sure it really forms to the curve of the armour, but the Emperor's Children logo flattens down pretty nicely to be fair, not like that bloody ultramarine symbol. Once it's dry, you can paint some more medium over the top to knock off the shine that transfers often have and leave it to dry. Next, let's add some simple battle damage by mixing black and purple paints together and using a tiny bit of torn up sponge to dab the paint and carefully tap it against the model. Be a bit sparing as it's really easy to go way over the top doing this, and try to just keep it a bit random if you can, maybe only focusing on a few armour panels that would likely get bonked and dinged. And then we can add some depth to that damage by grabbing squid pink highlight colour again, thin it down using water, and using our finest tip brush just line the underside of the most pronounced bits of damage. This will look like there's actual chunks and divots taken out of the armour, catching light and look awesome to be honest. And while we've got this colour out, thin so it flows nicely, it would be a good time to add some quick edge highlights, if you feel confident enough. Cut your teeth by doing easy stuff like the edges of the pauldrons, using the edge of your brush in slow, smooth strokes, and if you feel up to it, add little strokes to the hard edges and corners wherever you think the armour could do with a little lift. Try to make your hands in the position of the model do the work here, you don't want to be doing great big sweeps with your brush as that's how you easily make mistakes. If you mess up at any point, no worries. If it just happened, you can sometimes just wipe it away with your finger, but if it's in a recess or harder to fix, we can just touch it up with purple again in a minute. First though, let's make that helmet a bit more fancy with a little gold design. The Emperor's children are fancy boys after all. 
This is where old gold transparency works quite well, actually, because you sort of feel like you're sketching rather than making permanent marks. Building up that second coat on the bits of the design that I like, and then I mixed up some of that purple with a touch of pink to fix all of my mistakes on the armor. Tidying up the edge of the helmet design, and also fixing my sloppy edge highlights, cutting back into the bits that I thought were too wide and making them a bit more narrow, tight, and straight. Okay, let's make those eyes a bit more interesting. I used Vallejo's Scarlet Blood, a really vibrant orangey red, to carefully base coat the whole lens. And that purple is still wet on my palette to fix any areas around the eyes if I mess up, thankfully. I then added a bit of yellow into the red to make it more orange and painted towards the nose facing side of each lens. And again, using just yellow to make it extra fiery at the tips of the lens. I then added a dot of pale sand to the outer edge of the lens to complete the look. Almost there, some areas, particularly around the gold and grey pipes, lacked a bit of darkness in the recesses, so for this I used neat strong tone to darken them down a bit, using a detail brush to choose specifically where I wanted the shadows to be. After that, I mixed pale sand with that grey paint together to make a quick highlight colour and highlighted the most light catching areas of the pipework and under armour. For the final step, to tie the model in with its surroundings a bit more, I diluted the khaki paint that I'd used to base coat the base really heavily with water, so the paint totally breaks down and the pigment will settle into the recesses much more easily, and then painted it onto his feet and ankles. I gave this a quick blast of the hairdryer, and then added another layer, but this time instead of speeding up the drying, I switched out to a sponge and dabbed it across the wet parts, making it look a bit mottled and spattered, a nice realistic touch to finish the model. You can obviously use any of these techniques you like. If you don't like the freehand helmet design, no worries, just leave it off yours. Don't like the dirty boots or battle damage, just skip those steps. And make the army that looks perfect for you. To be honest though, I reckon this one looks pretty awesome. I'm definitely happy with it. And before I leave you, let's do a quick size comparison for funsies. Here's a classic 90s Space Marine, a Naughties Tactical Squad model, the Horus Heresy updated Marine, and a Primaris. I think it's quite a nice touch that these new Heresy Marines don't look crazy out of place next to either the Primaris or the Tactical Squad Marine, sort of bridging the gap between the crazy size difference of traditional Space Marines and their 2018 Battle Brothers. If you want to see more Horus Heresy Marines painted up, I would 100% recommend my good buddy Eric's new video where he customises and paints every single Legion in one video, and gives you a bit of background info on each chapter. What a total hero. Go check out Eric's Hobby Workshop right now, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.